Hello there everybody, my name is Waddles, I hope you're doing well, hope you're doing swell. Welcome to an updated Minecraft 1.14.3 plus Villager Breeder Tutorial. Unfortunately, my earlier Villager Breeder design seems to have been broken in the Minecraft 1.14.3 update. So, I went back to the drawing board and came up with this brand new design. This design will work in versions 1.14.3 and up. This design will also work in earlier versions as well, like Minecraft 1.14. Please keep in mind that there are currently some villager bugs going on as well. If you're having issues with villagers breeding, it, it could totally be a 1.14.3 thing. But don't worry, 1.14.4 should fix a lot of these bugs. I have tested this design in that version as well. If you like the video, like, subscribe, let's go. So in standard fashion, let's start off with the supplies. What do you need to build this thing? You will be needing at least six trapdoors, any variant, a composter, and six slabs, any kind of slab. You'll want eight beds this time around and then three other workstations. These workstations could be anything. You could use a lectern, you could use a barrel, uh, a cauldron, so long as they are actually workstations. You'll also need some crops to be planted. I recommend using beetroot, carrot, or potatoes. And then finally, extra building blocks. You'll definitely want some dirt and then some water as well. So gather up these materials and then you're pretty much good to start building. So first, we'll need to start off with our planting area. This planting area should be a 9x9 space with a water source, a single water source in the middle. If placed correctly, that single water source will keep all of this soil hydrated once we start planting crops. Next, pick two opposite sides of this platform. For me, I'll pick over here um, and on the other end. Go ahead and add two blocks of anything to both sides. I'm using oak wood, but you could use more dirt, you could use cobblestone, uh, really anything that you'd like. You could even use glass if you like building with glass. Next, let's go ahead and put some walls on this thing. The walls should hang off of this platform and be at least too high. You could go ahead and make these walls five high and make it a fully enclosed room or something like that if that's what you wanted, uh, but you will want your walls at least too high. This is to prevent villagers from getting out and other things like zombies from getting in. Okay, with all of this set up, let's go ahead and start placing in our workstations now. The workstation should be placed somewhat diagonal from this water source, but not at a perfectly 45 degree angle. You will want four again, but one of these workstations must be a composter. We need a farmer inside of this thing to harvest the crops. The farmer will be supplying all of the other villagers with their crops. You can do, say, two farmers and two fishermen, or, or a farmer and then three leather workers, it's totally up to you. The professions really don't matter all that much. But after placing those workstations in, you'll probably want to go ahead and just place a block on top of all of those to prevent any type of possible mob spawning or anything like that. Plus, the villagers don't need on top of these things anyways. They'll jump up there, jump down, and trample your crops. In this next step, we need to set up an area to get our baby villagers out of this thing. That area, well, it should be on either end, right in front of where your beds will go eventually. You want to dig out the farm blocks that you placed earlier, and instead place an open trap door like this. Villagers will see this as a walkable block, even though it is not. Now, to prevent the grown villagers from falling down there, place two blocks up on either side of this thing, and then place some slabs on the bottom half of the upper block, so we don't get spawns on top of it. This will allow baby villagers to run right through there, but not their grown ones. Do the same thing on the other side to prevent any um, unintended escapees from this thing. And believe it or not, we are actually almost done. The next thing that we need in is the beds. This design uses eight beds instead of six. You could technically get away with using six beds, but I think eight looks a little bit more symmetrical, so eight beds it is. <laughs> now, these beds can be any color. The color of the bed does not matter whatsoever. Another thing that I recommend doing that you don't technically have to do is this. I place a torch or even better, a lantern in between the two beds to light up all of these blocks over here. Mobs will be able to spawn on these oak plank blocks, so 
uh, you should probably prevent that. With a light source right here in the middle, your light level will be high enough to prevent any and all mob spawns on all of these blocks here. If you don't like that idea, you could switch these floor blocks out for something that mobs can't spawn on, like leaves. Another totally optional thing, but something that I recommend, is waterlogging the center block with something like a slab so your villagers don't fall inside of the water. After setting all of this up up top, we actually now need to move under the farm and talk about moving villagers away from this thing. So when a baby villager is born, it will claim one of the unclaimed beds. This will eventually become a problem if all of your beds become claimed. To have a baby villager unclaim a bed, you'll need to move it a long ways away. Um, some people say 60 blocks, other people say more like 100 blocks. But either way, the villagers need to get moved. How are we going to move them? Some sort of water stream. Of course, you could do maybe a minecart rail system or something else instead, but I definitely recommend the water. It's just easiest. So if we're going the water route, go under your farm and build two blocks down along the back side of this falling area over here. These walls can be built with anything. You don't need glass. Uh, after going two down, on that third one, place a floor. It might be a good idea to swap whatever block is below your water source uh, with a trapdoor. Trapdoors are a little smaller and will allow things to fit through easier. Build this box thing out until you get to that middle row. Do not build anything in the middle quite yet. Replicate that same containment box on the other side below the other falling area. In the middle here, we'll create a single one wide stream to move all of the villagers out and away. You'll want your floor in this middle area to be just a little bit lower than it is over here. Uh, make sure your walls do continue all the way up on the back side. Now we need some water in this. Water should go all along the back of both sides, right underneath where your villagers will be falling. Then you need three signs uh, to block water in the middle, just like that. Next, we'll need one final water source down here, and this is where I am stopping because this next part is pretty straightforward. Make your water stream move your villagers very, very far away. You can keep repeating this whole step model here, or you could use ice and signs and other methods to make your water stream stay on one level, but continue it so your villagers are moved 80 or so blocks away. You could do a little more, maybe a little less, um, but your villagers need to be out of this area entirely. If your baby villagers aren't being moved far enough, uh, when your grown villagers inside of this thing try and breed, they will fail. So um, that's how you know if your babies are far enough away or not. A few other potential baby villager moving ideas include a minecart rail system, moving them into the nether, or dropping them out of the sky. That's right, you can build this thing way up in the sky um, and then just have your baby villagers fall and then move them over a little less. Now we need villagers inside of this thing. How are we going to get that done? Well, in survival, I recommend luring some zombie villagers inside of this thing, blocking them off so they don't bother each other, and cure them up. You will really only need two villagers inside of this thing to get it going. If you are building this where an old village was, well, then you're going to have an even easier time getting villagers inside of this thing. Try a minecart track or villagers in boats and get at least two villagers inside of this thing. If you can only find two, um, go ahead and close all of these trap doors and get your villagers to breed. Uh, your baby will grow up and stay in here if all of these trap doors are closed, and that is what you want. You want four grown villagers inside of this thing total. No more, no less. And finally, last but not least, we need some crops planted in here. So go ahead and till all of this land and then plant carrots, beetroot, or potatoes inside of this farm. After planting all of your crops, those crops will, of course, begin to slowly grow. Once the crops are grown, your farmer villagers should walk around and harvest those crops. The farmer will then share food with all of these other villagers, and then eventually your villagers will have enough food in their inventories to be willing, and once they're willing, well, they'll eventually breed. You can kickstart this thing by manually throwing each villager 12 carrots, potatoes, or beetroot, or by trading with your villagers a few times to make them willing. One final thing and then we are completely done. This final thing, well, it's optional. Uh, you can go ahead and put a roof on this thing if you want. I definitely do recommend putting some kind of ceiling on this thing just to be safe, uh, prevent crazy things like lightning hitting your villagers and turning them to witches, you know, uh, that wouldn't be good, but entirely optional. You don't need a ceiling if you don't want it. 
The ceiling doesn't have to be immediately on top of the walls. You can space things out a little bit if that's what you want, or you could put it right on top of the walls. But with that, we are all done. I'd like to mention two more big things. Remember, move the babies far away, and, and two, uh, remember about the bugs. 1.14.3 has this interesting bug where villagers are sharing crops, but actually throwing all of their crops around. As stated earlier on in the video, this breeder will work in Minecraft 1.14.3, uh, but villagers are currently bugged. The only way around these villager bugs? Well, of course, wait for Minecraft 1.14.4 and hope for things to be better, which they are. My old villager breeder design may still be working in your world, but it, it really shouldn't be because the villagers cannot access their beds. If you have that old breeder, I definitely recommend doing these small changes to it to make sure it remains working into the future. But that is just about it for me today. If you have any questions, slide over to my subreddit and drop the questions over there, or slide into my Discord and ask me. You could also ask the questions down in the comments below. In the description, you'll find all of my cool links, like my Instagram, where I repost memes, my Twitter, where I tweet tweets, and finally, my Patreon, where you can support me if you want for some cool benefits. My name is Waddles. Thank you very much for watching. Go have a good day. I will see you next time. Goodbye, everyone.